In January 1987, the first 47 students registered for a combination of English as a Second Language academic professional courses. This new college credit program, commonly known as ESL, had been designed by three faculty on release time during spring term 1986. Pilot funding was through staff and program development. The fledgling ESL program recruited heavily in the community to maintain existence. Identifying existing students within the college who were in need of this specialized instruction was the first challenge. An initial needs assessment had indicated an ESL population far greater than the existing enrollment figures at that time. The college responded to the potential need in August 1987 by funding a full-time program manager and a permanent part-time senior clerk. Some classes were run with a minimum of seven students. By January 1988, the president and his senior staff had approved the proposed computer identification of potential ESL students, and enrollment began to build. The section enrollment fall term 1988 grew, and the part-time secretary became full-time. By that fall term in 88, the need for an adult basic education ESL program became apparent. The ESL office documented increasing numbers of community residents in need of ESL literacy, survival coping skills, pre-GED ESL, and pre-vocational ESL skills. These potential students came in great numbers to take the college credit ESL placement test, but could not place into the academic professional ESL program. This immigrant refugee population was far more diverse and their instructional needs were very different. To address the needs of this growing limited English population, a marketing plan was written in November 1988 proposing an ESL department in order to begin the development of comprehensive ESL instruction which could meet changing community needs. The plan was approved and part-time instructional monies were moved into the ESL budget from ABE and adult high school where some efforts had begun to offer mixed level classes entitled English for the Foreign Born. Through another staff and program appropriation of $3,200, an initial four level literacy pre-GED curriculum was written by an ESL consultant. A new ESL advisor funded fall term of 1988 for the college credit advising was assigned partial responsibility in the new non-credit literacy ESL program. Initial plans to share clerical staff, however, did not materialize. By May 1989, placement testing was piloted and classes leveled by skill were offered on downtown campus and several center sites in the new adult ESL program. The ESL secretary and advisor took on ever-increasing responsibilities in the non-credit registration process in order to enroll students and assure state compliance for audit review. The fall term 891 enrollment that year grew to 420 in non-credit, while the credit section enrollment reached 200. The support staffing and services for this special needs population particularly in the non-credit registration process, began to reach critical proportions. The downtown campus provost reassigned available clerical staff intermittently to ESL on an hourly basis when possible. 600 monies for educational materials and supplies had not been appropriated for the new program. Consequently, 600 monies appropriated to the credit program were continually borrowed. By January 1991, six levels of instruction were offered in the literacy pre-GED program, including an advanced grammar composition course where students produced the first edition of their own non-credit student newspaper. Unduplicated annual enrollment reached nearly 2,000 in non-credit alone. The program has received national recognition through the United States Department of Education. Dr. Leo Bird, a research analyst employed by the US DOE, commented that of the 50 community colleges involved in the 1991 nationwide study of pre-vocational ESL programs, FCCJ had the most dramatic enrollment growth of any ESL pre-vocational program nationwide. While enrollment in the FCCJ literacy program 
has increased over 300 percent since 1989 in ESL. The credit academic program enrollment has more than doubled over the same time period. Waiting lists exist for registration at all levels. While unduplicated enrollment figures are available only by term in credit programs, the annual section enrollment summer term 1990 through winter term 1991 is nearly 1,000. Two full-time certified ESL faculty have been funded in the credit program. The full-time to part-time faculty ratio, however, is one full-timer to four part-timers. It has been necessary to cancel fully enrolled classes on several occasions due to lack of faculty availability. Advising for academic ESL students is detailed and exacting. The credit program is fully competency-based with pre-post course testing in all 12 courses developed by existing faculty. Individual students usually place at more than one level depending upon their progress in the various language skills. Five to seven orientation sessions followed by individual advising sessions are held by the ESL advisor at the beginning of each term for an ever-increasing number of new students. Serving a special needs handicapped population, ESL is a hybrid department. It is both a diverse instructional area of great breadth as well as a student support services area. At FCCJ, ESL instruction is currently serving students who are unable to communicate a single word in English, as well as having little or no literacy in their native language. At the other end of the spectrum, ESL at FCCJ is serving students with advanced professional degrees from their native countries who are in search of rigorous academic instruction in ESL in both the non-credit and the credit programs. Seventy-eight different languages are currently represented amongst the total ESL population at the college. In fall term 1991, the addition of an instructional coordinator for the literacy pre-GED program will be a cost-effective means of refining curriculum, coordinating instruction, and training and all adjunct teaching staff. The shortage of trained ESL teachers for the literacy ESL adult population is a national problem. Currently, the new coordinator has continued the efforts of the ESL department to streamline non-credit placement and registration procedures. Steps in utilizing volunteers, volunteer translators, adjuncts who attend registration planning workshops, and preterm in-class registration for returning students held by faculty are all measures that have kept the weekly registration testing procedures reasonably manageable. Fall term 1991, 647 non-credit students were pre-registered in class during the summer term from the downtown campus and Wilson sites. Nearly 400 new students and or returning students who did not pre-register came for the first two registration sessions at each site. Mixed level classes are still held at center sites as well. The preparation and follow-up placement for each weekly registration period is extensive. Prepared registration packets are divided for new and returning students. Students are assigned to color-coded and language-coded classrooms. Many students are able to complete the registration forms with less help if the forms have been translated into their own language. Others are unable to formulate the Latin alphabet and need much creative assistance. Here in this scene, one of six rooms of simultaneous registration, the instructor gives directions in English while his directives are translated orally into Russian and Armenian. Incidentally, this instructor is fluent in French and Spanish, but neither are of any use in this particular session. The actual registration process takes three hours per session in order to include the more advanced students able to take the state required tests. Tests are scored on site and divided into packets for placement leveling by the instructors the following day. The registration process itself, complicated by cultural and language barriers, is the more manageable aspect of the literacy program registration process. With no additional clerical advising staff funded for the literacy program, the processes of placement, audit check, and submission of registration forms for FCCJ mainframe input is a much more lengthy task. A departmental database must also be kept 
to maintain program accountability and determine individual student instructional placement. Borrowed staff from other areas of the college, personal friends volunteering time for data input, and current staff working extensive hours of overtime in order to cope with the workload are accelerating. The rapid growth of the immigrant refugee population in the United States has truly been untimely in an era of state revenue shortfalls and budget cuts. Efforts to limit enrollment by limiting class offerings and closing center sites has not sufficiently curtailed the influx of students, phone inquiries, and walk-in inquiries that occur daily. A need for support staff reported as exigency in 1989 has now reached a proportion where open enrollment must be curtailed and waiting lists in the literacy program must mirror those of the credit program. Our diverse FCCJ ESL instruction is on the brink of much potential. State, national, and international networking through the ESL office is tapping sources of revenue generating ESL instruction, which may provide some relief for clerical and advising support staff, as well as other international education linkages. As the 10th largest community college in the country, few instructional agencies nationwide offer the comprehensive array of instruction available at FCCJ. This breadth is mirrored in the limited English proficient population as well. No other segment of the local community is in greater need of educational services. Many come to the United States with skills that can offer much resource to the local community, but they are unable to utilize those skills due to English language handicaps. Much vocational retraining is also needed for the limited English population in order to be economically mobile in American society. As Workforce 2000 indicates, entry-level workers will consist of women, minorities, and immigrants. In Northeast Florida, Workforce 2000 has arrived. <laughs>